All right, so today we're going to be talking about Al Haitham. Now, a lot of these videos have been centered around Al Haitham. Yes, it is because he's a brand new unit and he's one of my favorite units, so why not want to talk about him? But we are going to be talking about what is his better value option getting his Constellation 1 or getting his signature weapon. Now, of course, as time goes on or very, very soon, we are going to be going onto the Hu Tao slash Yulon train. Um, these are the upcoming rerun units and a lot of people are very excited for them. So we are going to be making a couple videos on that. But let's keep on with Al Haitham for right now because he is the brand new unit. He's the brand new fun unit. He is very popular at the moment um, regarding uh, if he's good or not, which I've made previous videos about it. And also, thank you guys so much for the support on those videos. It means a lot. Um, seeing all the, I guess you say the conversation of the, you know, I'll hate them versus other units or I'll hate them as a character period is very interesting to me. And I love seeing how people, you know, what topics y'all bring up with these characters is always really interesting. Um, thank you guys so much for the support. And also, before we get on with the video, make sure to like and sub. I'd very much appreciate that. But let's go ahead and get actual main content of the video done and let's start talking about what is more worth his constellation one or his weapon now first we're going to be talking about his weapon only because this is the easier of the two to explain as the other one's going to take a little bit more explaining than this sword this sword is a little bit cut and dry not too hard to explain um the sword is the light of foliar incision yes it is i'll hide them signature sword um, it has a base attack of 542, so very average. Um, crit damage 88%, which is very, very high up there with the Red Horn Storm Thresher and the Aqua Simulacra for the highest crit damage weapon. Really, really great. And also, another thing to add on to it, the passive does give it an innate crit rate is increased by 4%, which is absolutely amazing. Doesn't matter that it's 4%. Any free crit rate on top of that 88% crit damage is absolutely amazing. Um, it helps very little with your build or your artifact sets, but you know, it's still nice to have that four extra percent. That's four extra percent that you can create and do some nice damage. Um, the rest of the sword though, this is where it is going to matter, uh, differ. If you're gonna want this sword for it to be used on everyone, then you have to make sure that you understand that this sword is a stat stick. The crit damage of 88% is really, really nice to have on it, and it having crit rate increased by 4% is also very, very nice to have on it. Um, but you are not going to be able to use its full passive if you're just wanting to slap this on everyone because it does have certain conditions that you need to fulfill um, before you can use the sword to its full potential. Um, the rest of the passive is after normal attacks deal elemental damage, which not a lot of characters can do that. Um, the foliar incision effect will be obtained, which increases your damage dealt by normal attacks and elemental skills by 120% of elemental mastery. Um, this will disappear after 28 damage instances or 12 seconds. There are not a lot of characters that use normal attacks as their main DPS option. And other than that, there's not a lot of characters that are able to infuse elemental, um, I guess you say, power into their normal attack. So there's very little characters that can do this. This is something like um, Kaching, Ayato, C6 Kazuha. These are the main units that are going to be able to use this sword. But another problem is it needs elemental mastery to scale off of. So Kazuha still works. Um, well, C6 Kazuha still works. Ayato still works. I mean, not Ayato. Kaching still works because she does um, Dendro reactions. So she needs elemental mastery anyway. But like, again, you're not going to be using this for everybody. The only people that can mainly use this passive are those three characters. Ayato, Kaching, and Kazuha C6. And Ayato doesn't really bump up or I guess you could say invest in EM that much. So he's not going to be getting that much of effect of, from this sword either way. So Ka, uh, Kaching and Kazuha C6 are the main units that are going to be basically being able to use the full effect of the sword. Other than that, this sword is a main stat stick. It is a really nice sword, but there are other weapons, especially in the future with the Aqua Simulacra, the Staff of Homa. There are other really cool weapons, the Mist Splitter, that are much, much more universal, much more value for your Primo Gems. I would say wait for those weapons if you're looking for a universal type weapon, especially the Mist Splitter, which should be coming very, very soon. If not, if you're looking for an I'll hate them weapon, then this is very perfect. This is an absolutely amazing sword. If you want to invest in your I'll hate them, this is a really nice sword to have. Um, but don't expect this to be a universal sword. Don't expect this to be the all for one type sword for every single sword carrier that comes out because not every single unit can be able to use the full effect of this passive and the full effect of the elemental mastery scaling that is on this passive is just a really good stat stick with 88% crit damage and 4% crit rate. And now let's talk about his constellation one. Now with his constellation one, it is when a projection attack hits an opponent, 
The scale cooldown is decreased by 1.2 seconds and this effect can be triggered every one second. Now this sounds very, very, very good on paper, but there are certain, I guess you say conditions that you have to make note of before you look into this constellation. Now the major problem with I'll hate them that a lot of people have, which personally me, I didn't mind it that much, but it is something that you definitely see once you have I'll hate them C0 is that his skill has a very, very, very long cooldown. It's an 18 second cooldown. Now, sometimes you can swap into other characters, put their buffs out or put one character's buff out and he will still have to wait. You would have to wait for that um, skill cooldown to get um, back to zero and use it again. And that's very annoying because it makes it seem a little bit sluggish, a little bit more rigid uh, when, you know, playing with I'll hate them. Now, in a perfect world, you would love to get this every one second, but that's not the case because the projection attacks don't come out every one second, they come out every 1.6 seconds. And realistically, although the projection attack interval is 1.6 seconds, the animations that I'll hate them has, whether it be his charge attack animation, whether it be his string, there are certain pauses between the two. And even if you animation cancel, that is still taking up time from your chiseled mirrors that you're gonna have up on the field. So in a perfect world, you would get a bunch of these projection attacks off and get so much cooldown um, thrown away. But in realistically, in a realistic situation, I was able to get around five to six instances of the uh, projection attacks. And that is going to be making it on average about six to seven seconds saved on your cooldown, making it rather than 18 seconds, making it around 12 seconds, 11 seconds ish. So that makes the cooldown for this skill dramatically decrease. And you're able to because of the projection attack or the chiseled mirrors intervals each one lasts four seconds so having four seconds from the two mirrors that come out when you use your e with it being zero and then the other you get from the plunge attack if you hold your e you're gonna have 12 seconds of dendro infusion now you're not going to be able to use your charge attack to refresh this duration but you are going to be able to use your charge attack to start the duration. So you're going to have to plan plan wisely in how you're going to be able to rack up your chiseled mirrors in order to make sure you have the most amount for however long the cooldown is. So you're going to be wanting to do your E without any mirrors, um, plunge attack, which gives you three. And then with the five to six different projection attacks that you get, you're going to be able to pop your E again once the Dendro Infusion ends. And you're going to be able to have almost 100% uptime Dendro Infusion um regardless of whatever happens now like i said in a perfect world you would get more projection attacks and you will be able to decrease this by a lot more but having the six seconds seven seconds saved from having those five to six projection attacks is going to help you get those 100 percent time of uptime for the dendro infusion and this makes you know switching between characters and having all hate thumbs e ready already is going to be absolutely amazing now like i said the problem with c0 is that you could pretty much have Kuki's um, electric ring around you, her skill, and it will last longer than what it would take for your chiseled mirrors to go out. Now, it's not by that much, but when you go back to switch to Kuki, put her ring back on, you're still waiting for All Hate Them's E to come back without any projection attacks. So All Hate Them's projection attacks are gonna come out every so often because there's a lot of different factors that change it. You're gonna be dodging if you don't have a shield. If you do have a shield, there's still animations that have to play through. So his charge attack animation, his animation from his string, um, animation canceling with his dash, those are still gonna eat up the time that you have to do projection attacks. And of course, it would mean you would have a lot more if you didn't have to do all that, but there's a lot of factors that are out of your control in this game. So five to six projection attacks are pretty much the average of what you're gonna get for now until we figure something crazy, because I know there are some combos that basically uh, change the way the projection attacks works and give you more um, depending on the combo that you use. So looking at C1, Giving that 100% uptime for Dendro is absolutely amazing to have. It's basically as similar as it is for Hu Tao C1, where she doesn't have any stamina you know, consumed when she does her charge attack during her E. They're basically the same thing. They're very, very, very similar in how they make the play style of both characters. Very, very smooth. Very, very smooth and very, very good to use. And it feels nice to have when you have it on. So in my, or in my opinion, what would be the best I guess you could say um, choice for the constellation or the weapon. Well, that matters on how much you like I'll hide them in all honesty. 
if you are looking for all height them to be you know your number one dps your favorite um hyper kit not hyper carry but your favorite dps to use you know around overworld bosses all that type of stuff um you might want to invest in c1 his c1 is absolutely amazing the dendro uptime 100 percent can last all the buffs that you possibly can use for any character and it out does all of them and you won't have to worry about just walking around running around which i probably could find a clip and show it up here that i'm running around waiting for my e to come back because you can't refresh it any other way besides your ult so having that 100 uptime is really really nice it makes him a lot more smooth to play a lot more fun to play like again like i said who tell c1 does the exact same thing if you're looking for a more universal option when it comes to the weapon or the constellation of course i'm gonna say the weapon the weapon is an 88% crit damage weapon with crit rate 4%. That's an enormous stat stick to have on any character, um, although you won't be able to use the passive on all of them. So in all honesty, the C1 is better to have if you're going to be investing in your I'll Hate Them. Overall, you do not have to spend on either or. I do think I'll Hate Them is really, really good on C0 without his weapon. He can do really, really big damage without either or, so you don't have to get both of them or you have to get either of them because he does such an amazing job without either of them. Um, C0 is not really needed and his sword isn't the most universal for everyone to use. If you're going to be waiting for something like that, then you might as well wait for the Mist Splitter to come back, the Staff of Homa to come back, um, the Aqua Simulacra to come back, which they are coming back very, very soon. So that's pretty much it. I do say that if you're going to invest in I'll Hate Them, you know, solely, c1 if you want a more universal option his weapon if you want it in value wise neither <laughs> because there's no point in having either of them if they're hyper specialized for i'll hate them so other than that thank you guys so much for watching see y'all in the next one and peace